Coming from the. Huh. Well, I'm, I'm glad. I'm, gl- I'm glad you're here. Yeah. <laughs> oh, great. <laughs> of course, yeah. I mean, it's. Jesus, man. Paul, I mean. Paul and Paul. <laughs> After all this time. Um. Do you. Do you mind me asking something? <laughs> oh, probably not, but let's see. When I came up there, you seemed surprised to see me. I was, and I'm not saying that. I was very surprised. No, you seemed. scared. Like you'd seen a ghost or something. Um, look. Look, I don't want to... We should be catching up. There's so much. There's so much. I don't know. I want to know, um... I want to... I... I... <laughs> yeah, because I can't... Well, it's because I, I come to the bench every day. Every day I sit here. And... I had a dream once that I was... I was here, and someone came up to me, saying my name, like like you did, just there. But it wasn't... It wasn't you. It was, um, this fucking horrible... I, I never want... I never want... It just... It reminded me. It is all. It took me a moment, okay? It just took me a moment. It's it's fine. <laughs> well, it's a good thing it's me, then. Yeah. <laughs> it's a good thing, right? That was the one good thing. You remember that? <laughs> of course! Yeah, man! That God! Was... That was amazing! <laughs> Why didn't you stop that? Well, you know... Had to, didn't we? Because of the accident. The, the what? You know, the accident where you. Um... I don't think we stopped at all. I think we kept doing it. I think we might be doing it right now. <laughs> Look, mate, I've I've got to go. Where? Mr. Goodman. Ah, officer. Thanks for coming in. I know it's Sunday. Oh, that's okay. I wasn't... What do we have here? A body. Oh, of course. Look, how long have you been doing this? Um, just a little over two years. There's no one more senior who should have come? I'm the oldest here. How much... How much of this kind of thing have you done? Well, I'm not green around the gills. I've seen some pretty messy remains. Have you ever worked in a war zone? No. How bad is it? What's the cause of death? Oh, that's what we need you for, sir. I see. It's unclear. What is unclear is how it lived in the first place. I'm sorry. I really wasn't told anything. Are you saying it's... I don't know what it is, sir. I need you to do that. Well, then I think i better see it, don't you? I'll know when I see it. I just need to... Yes, well, right this way, sir. Thanks. I mean, this is this is my place. I know where. Right this way. It's um. It's just under this cloth, sir. But it's so big. The, the way you spoke, I thought it is far too large, sir, for what it is. Is it young? Parts of it. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> beginning exa- <clears throat> Beginning examination of subject. 43. Subject. Subject. Oh my god. Please, sir, continue your examination. Yes, sorry. Heart seems to be intact. It's not clear how it connects to everything else. No... Distinguishing human features. And the smell. It's acrid. <clears throat> Do you think it was once alive? Was there once life here? <laughs> some, honestly, I don't know, but something this bad had to have lived at some point. Something that smells this bad might have to have lived at some point to get to this. The, the skin is pallid. It must have been dead for some time now. But the the the, the veins—they don't. And the 
There are no teeth, and the mouth that's inward, and, and the eyes, the eyes, I can't even understand Excuse me. Excuse me, sir. Uh, uh, Excuse me. The subject head. There's no Excuse me. Connecting sockets. Even. Excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me, ladies. Paul. It's five minutes to curtain. I'm not going out there. What? No fucking way. I'm not performing for pricks like these. Who? Don't talk about the audience that way. These sodding parasites. The press. Look what they said about my act. What, what is this? Clark Collis. It is utterly disgusting throughout. Well, that's harsh, mate. Well, I know it's. I'm not even that long. How did he even think that come to that conclusion? You need length for disgustingness in this business. We all know this. <laughs> we all we all knew Gregory Peck. Errol Flynn. Whoever. What is this one? Cine mixtape. J Jay Olsen. At times it displays an almost alarming level of contempt for its audience. I mean, I never even heard of fucking Cine mixtape. What are they doing reviewing bloody theatre things that this is? Twats. <laughs> Every one of them. But if, if you think that one's bad, how about this? De Debbie Baldwin at Lad Ladue News? Ugh. What even? Ladue? 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 Bobby Ladue? <laughs> I hope not. <laughs> I hope not. Jesus, imagine. Just read what fucking Debbie Baldwin's got to say. The problem is simple, it's just not funny. <sighs> I'm a fan of inappropriate humour, but there is to be hum- there has to be humour. Don't see this movie. Don't rent this movie. Don't even read this review. Oh shit, it was a trap by Debbie Baldwin. Fuck. It's not even a movie. Oh, fucking hell, Debbie. You're really out on this one. But it, but it bothers me that people like her don't even don't even know what it is they're reviewing. It's not <laughs> it's... even bother to check. No. Do they know who I am? No. Well, clearly not if they could say things like this. What's this now? Uh. Ben Sachs at the Chicago Reader. Where are you getting all of these, by the way? Oh, I have an agent. She does things. Marvelous things. Despite all the gross-out humour, the most offensive thing about this is the lazy filmmaking. Every shot feels like a first take, and the haphazard editing precludes any comic timing. That's what the thing that I do is! <laughs> Your live editing is renowned about the town! Yes! They, they, they call me Johnny Live Editing Performant. <laughs> Whenever they see me. They do call you that. They call you that in the pub? Yeah. Not down the pub? <laughs> Not down the pub, even? That's both things! <laughs> both places you go! <laughs> Oh, unbelievable. Look, I appreciate that it's dispiriting, but what do they know? It's the public we're trying to entertain, not loser critics you'd never want to share a pint with. Well, that's all very well cut, but how do we know that the public are any better? We hear them jeering and laughing, obviously, making their mess, but how do we know what they really think? So, what do you really think? Well, it's not great, mate. You've not been looking after it, have you? Well, that's why I bring it to a garage, to be looked after. I mean, look at the state of it. I mean, it's horrific. It makes absolutely no sense. Well, look, Miss Figueres, you buy parts from all around, and, you know, this is what happens, isn't it? Well, look, you brought it in here to Ingrid's Motability... Emporium. Dock base. Yes. The IMDB garage. And, look, <laughs> I, you expect an honest opinion, and that's what I'm giving you. But, look, I got another mechanic in, Charlotte97 from Amazon, and she said... Oh, yeah, yeah. Somehow the trailer of the car... Managed to make this film appear good. This car appear good. Uh, when in reality, it's absolutely terrible. Oh, well, come on. Tried to watch it until the end, but it was rubbish. It drove me mad. Tried to watch the car? Yeah, I tried to watch the car. Watch it from the beginning to the end. Couldn't do it. Had to leave. Don't bother wasting your time, money, or effort on this trash. That's what, that's what her advice to you was, sir. Yes, but I already have is the problem, Charlotte 97 from Amazon. <laughs> I mean, Amazon Garages. Charlotte 97 from Amazon Garages. <laughs> And, you know, honestly, if I'd have had your advice four years ago, then it might have been useful. But, I mean, to be fair, it's a little, it's a little bit uh, audacious of you to suggest throwing it away now. I'm asking you what, or like, what good I can get from it now. Look, mate, I did a road travel test on this. Oh, God. Well, what's the RT score, then? RT, it got an RT score of 4%. Oh. What? I also gave it a meticulous car test. And it has an MC score oh, look, look, of you just, 18. You just tell me how serious this is. I'm afraid it's very serious, Mr. Goodman. Oh, Christ. It's very good that you came in to get this checked when you did. What, what is it? I'm afraid you've got three men. What? Yes. First of all, let me just show you these charts. If you look over here at your Asif Manvi. Asif Manvi? Yep, your Asif Manvi. Asif you'll see Manvi. that it's definitely had lesions in the Mother's Day, Last Airbender, and Lateral 43 situations. Uh, wait, wait, sorry, Freeman. Yeah. 
You but it basically it happens when various shit parts of you get involved in some, in the same process three times in a row. I mean, over here in your common clavicle, over here in your common clavicle, again New Year's Eve. You've really been hammering it on New Year's Eve, mate. That last New Year's Eve you had must have really fucked you because your common clavicle, your Halle Berries, and your Josh Jamel, all all showing signs of three men. Sorry, hang on a fucking minute. I, I don't I don't understand the first word you're saying. I'm just telling you, mate. Look, clearly, you got whacked out your head on New Year's Eve, and then you've gone in for Suicide right. Squad, Catwoman, and Transformers mm. Two, and whatever this thing is that you've done, your Procedure Forty Three. It's just, it's just fucked all procedure three 40, of them. What the fuck is Procedure Forty Three? Look, mate. It doesn't make any fucking sense. Look, I'm just reading the charts, mate. That's what's telling me the OGT charts, the one general treatment chart. How oh, they do say to follow the one general treatment chart? I've just yeah. I suppose I better get used to it then. Um, I should think so. How long do I have? You'll have ten minutes once the exam starts, and your questions will be on the first four texts of um, Anthology Forty Three. Forty Three. Question oh, one: God. Describe the depiction of late noughts social media culture in the framing story of the Fred. Oh. Um. <coughs> 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 uh, well. Th- okay. Well. Uh. Oh. The 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 Fred is uh. A effective depiction of late noughts social media culture, um, for many reasons. First, firstly, the the story of the two stoner types who are uh, oh God, come representative on, come on, come on. of representative of well, stoner types in general. It's exactly what it. It's mm. in the thread. Very good. It's yes. It's 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 not even a metaphor. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm sorry. I, I did revise this. Um, you know, sometimes you think they're not going to ask the ones that you revise for. <sighs> okay. And then the young boy is playing the. Well, he's fulfilling the trope of the the, the genius, the, the young genius. Mm. Um, classic trope. It's a classic classic trope, and um, comes up quite often in life actually. Mm. Um, if you'd seen my family. And, um, anyway, <laughs> I and, have. Well. Sir, so in uh, the, the late naughty social media does does play a prominent role in this. And uh, firstly, the, the the two stoner types are using online social media for pornographic reasons. Mm. Are they, or is it in terms of gaining viral media attention? YouTube on YouTube. Mm. Yes, they're on YouTube, and they are uh, performing. A stunt, a jackass, a prank. Yes, yeah, a, a jackass stunt. That is a correct. A jackass stunt. Okay, as it's um, known in the ox in the OED. Okay, um, you sure we can't have the OED on the desks? Because <laughs> no, they're quite comfortable where they are on my genitalia. <laughs> hey, homeschool. And that's it. That's it. Of course, they're they're, they're doing a, a prank. The uh, one of the boys, uh, long-haired stoner, mm. is holding a a dart in his mouth. A dart? A dart. Yes. yes. Okay. And his and his other uh, fat stoner, I think he's called in the in the in the, in the mm, chubby notes. stoner. He's credited as chubby. Fuck. I mean, blast. Chubby stoner <laughs> has a dartboard and he's throwing it at the at the child and uh, at the other stoner. Oh gosh, I'm so nervous. At the the teenager, the You're stoner. Doing very team. well. Thank you. He's you smell marvelous. <laughs> Well, with that in mind, and he, and he, they're filming on YouTube, and he throws the dartboard into the the the, te- the stoner teen's face, and he, the dartboard catches the dart, mm. um, and everyone's fine, and it's going to be a YouTube sensation. So they upload it to YouTube, uh, which is social media. Check the footnotes of uh, my <laughs> reference list just there. Oh yes, it's my number <laughs> at the bottom. Mm. Whilst they're waiting for their video to go viral, mm. um, it it goes viral. Very good. Yes, and um, first off, they refresh it, and it's uh, 256 views, mm-hmm. and then they refresh it again, and it, it's it's unprecedented. Before long, they have millions of views, but it turns out that it's the genius child who has been pranking their viral video. Yes, using impossible technology. Yes, in impossible child genius technology, They're, which is which is one of one of the things of social media. That's what they mean when they say social media yes. nowadays. Child genius, and um, <laughs> so the 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 stoners are embarrassed because the child has been more social media than they are in the late noughties, and for many multifaceted reasons, in a nutshell, <laughs> they decide to get back at him because social media in the late noughties. Absolutely. 
<laughs> oh, and incidentally, they bring about the end of the world. So, mm, just by oh, and by. Yes, of course. Eventually. So, discuss the use of irony in the first story of Anthology 43, The Catch. Ooh, okay. Um, irony. Is that sort of, that's saying one thing and meaning something else? Mm. Oh, is that right? I can never tell when you do that noise, sir. It's, it's close enough. Just tell me what happens in The Catch. Okay. Okay. Oh, yes. Okay, uh, sorry, I just need to check my notes. Mm, it's exquisitely rich, this text. Oh, it's it's in very delicious, delicious irony mm. and metaphor and what? homily. Oh, I suppose so, sir. Um, mm. All I know about it is that um, well, Kate Winslet is uh, is is a single woman. Um, you you've, you've seen them? Yes, um, I know of them. Yes, um, they're in the the Heinemann uh, history of the early modern, <laughs> the early modern naughty social media framing <laughs> device. Um, and she, and she's going on a date that's been set up by some friends, I think. Or sort of, Yes. Yes, or okay. Gotham City Magazine. Or Gotham One City One of the magazine. two elements in the scene. Yes. Okay, great. Oh, this is saying Gotham. Hmm. Well, anyway. Um, and he's... he's it's, it's Hugh Jackman he's, she's going on a date with. And Gotham, lucky for her. Lucky for her, you think? Oh! Oh. Well, I, th- I think... <laughs> I mean, this is this is where the... Uh, the I, I, irony comes in. Yes. Yes, because um, he's got... Um, he's very attractive, but he's he's got balls on his chin. Now, what do you mean by balls on his chin? Well, he has a uh, scrotum, sir. He has a scrotal sack, um, as as uh, as Mr. Uh, Mr. Bishop ex- and described it last week. Do and these uh, scrotia balls, contain balls inside? Yes. Do these scrotia contain testiculatums? Uh, they contain balls, sir. I see. <clears throat> but how does this scene unfold with this young, begenitaled man? Oh, well. I mean, she's disgusted because I mean, she's obviously from the the early the early nineties or something, mm. um, from pre Titanic. Yes, because she is hor- horrified at the thought of an attractive man having balls on his chin. Mm. Actually, come to think of it, it's probably not that he's attractive that's the horrifying thing, but it but that is the funny thing in the scene. Oh yes, I mean you're the you're the clever one here, sir. Um, is, is this? Yes, I can confirm that this is the humorous part. Oh good. <laughs> <laughs> yes, so. That's correct. Um, and then other uh, people come in, and uh, nobody seems to mind that he's he's got the balls. Um, any balls, in fact. They mm. don't ask about any of his balls. And Kate Winslet can only think about the balls on his chin, because mm. he spills soup on them. And he, when he coughs, they, they, they sort of go huh, into his neck. <laughs> and um, is that <laughs> funny? <laughs> like testicles do. I mean, maybe. I don't have them yet. My dad said he, I'm getting them for my 17th birthday. He gets things on the balls and then he he puts them near her face. And nobody else minds, but she minds. Oh, fantastic. <laughs> and then it just sort of ends. Yes. <laughs> Sorry, can I close this page now, sir? Yes, most certainly. Okay. Here is my next question. Who? <laughs> <laughs> Take a moment. Mm. There is a, a, a generous 20-minute vomiting break mm. during this examination. Mm. Next mm. question. Homeschooled. Discuss. Mm. Liv Schreiber. Correct. And Naomi Watts. Moving on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank God. Oh, wait, sir. That was a school joke, wasn't it? That was one of my charming oh, school jokes. God. I want to know in very much detail what happens to Liv Schreiber. I hate you, sir! <laughs> we also have a generous outburst break mm. <laughs> built into this examination. Can I have it now, please, sir? <laughs> yes. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Might space it out. Okay. Liv Schreiber. Liv Schreiber and Naomi Watts are homeschooling a child, mm. which is clever because that's the name of the, the sketch. Oh, it, they've um, taught, they've tied it in. Yes, they is homeschooled, and then the footnote seven, and underneath it says seven. Mm. This this sketch, and Liv Schreiber and Naomi Watts are talking to two uh, complete fucking randos in their living room, and um, the. The, uh, they're talking about homeschooling their child, and the 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 the, the, the non-famous parents who aren't Liv Schreiber and Naomi Watts. Neither of them. Neither of them. Good lord. Not even half of one of them. Jesus. Is any of Liv Schreiber? And they say, well, you know, we're we're fools, so maybe homeschooling is a bad idea. And they say, no, absolutely not, because um, oh sir, please don't make me talk about this. <laughs> I'm afraid you must if you want to get this degree in pet grooming. Well, writing one thing, it is, it is a test. 
<laughs> they don't call it that for nothing. <laughs> so they 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 homeschool him, and then uh, as they as they tell the uh, not even Liv Schreiber and Naomi Watts parents, mm. we the audience are given well, we're given a sort of video education of perhaps it might be what Eisenstein would refer to as a montage. Yes, if this were of course, a film of course, and of not course. prose. Of course, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Have I failed? Not yet. Oh, okay, you're on the brim. Break. Tr- must try harder. The brim break. So I, I just don't know where I am with you. <laughs> and, 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 and like all school things, they 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 teach him. They teach him maths, and they they teach him humility. Mm. And and uh, oh, they bully him. Yes. Um. Do they do they call him a fag? I am pretty sure that at least one of them refers to him as a fagulate. Great. Is that how you pronounce it? Mm. Oh, I thought it's Fagiola. <laughs> That's the female of the variant. Oh, I see. Oh, you're wonderful, sir. Very knowledgeable. What are you doing after this exam, <laughs> sir? <laughs> I'll be caning you. Now get on with it. <laughs> well, I better be good here then. <laughs> hey, guys! Come check out this kid's weird view! And the, yes, they, they call him a fag, obviously, which we all mm. know and love. And then... <laughs> um, Hilarious. Well, and then Naomi Watts uh, goes to... Well, it's imp- she goes to have sex on him. Oh, she does have sex on him. Yeah, and, and he just doesn't really appreciate this at all because he's his mummy. Oh, it's his mother! Mm. Oh, there's subtext here I have not picked up upon. No matter, please proceed. Can I be the teacher now? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe in the next one. Oh, well, Liv Schreiber also... Look, does... does You seem like a man of the world, sir. Does Liv Schreiber try to fuck his son or to do I it? Mean, I'd be very surprised if he didn't, young Paul. Uh, he's Kevin, after all. He is Kevin. Um, they, 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 at least one of the parents do, and they've ruined him basically. Yes. But then he's very polite. Is the ending? Oh. And he, and he has a girlfriend, and it's. Oh, a... how lovely! So it all ended well for Kevin. Yes, Kev, Kevin and his blow-up doll girlfriend. Oh. That he speaks for. Irony. Oh. You did it, Paul. Well done. I mean, I know that was the previous question, but still, very. Good. <laughs> well, look, you're the headmaster. The final question of your examination. Please tell me about the use of. Hilarious comedy as a device in proposition. Well, do we m- hilarious in a little Britain way, or is there any other way? Downfall. <laughs> yes, that way. Oh, okay. In the shower way. <laughs> well, l- allow me to answer this question, sir, with another question. Holy fuck, boy! Is that a yes? Yes. Okay. <laughs> I'm. In- I am anticipating many great things to wash upon me. Oh, okay. What's even funnier than your parents fucking you? What's that? It's shit. Lots of it. (laughs) Can I say shit, sir? (laughs) Well done. Um, Well... Chris, Chris, Chris Pratt's in this one. You remember, do you remember Chris Pratt? He was um, in the early eighties. He was in something called Parks and Recreation, and then, um, mm-hmm. and then they when they brought him back to life, and he lost all of uh, he lost all of that sort of that dead weight. Yes, they were like, as a oh, literary he... character, he lost yeah. the thematical dead weight. Yes, and, and became then... a ripped ripped thematic boy. <laughs> is that? Gosh, you're so smart. I bet your cock is wonderful, sir. <laughs> the it's pretty good. Yes, well, he's back, and um, in in better films like this one, and. Um, his real life wife, Anna F- Anna Furry. Real life wife. Real life wife. Anna yes. Furry. Um, it's in the glossary terms. If you can just see down there, <laughs> sir. Don't. Are you licking my finger now? Life, life, wife. My finger's wet now, sir. <laughs> Chris Pratt and his real life wife. Um. Well, she asked him to do a poo on him, and mm, the end. That's he, he. He eventually does. He he does that, but. He well, the hilarity for me, sir, yes. came that she wanted a romantic shit, and he wanted to shit on her like she was a dirty whore. <laughs> yes, like and, the dirty whore. Yeah, and then he gets run over and uh, explodes. Explodes in, shit. in a shower of feces. Yeah. Hmm. Oh, marvelous. Yes. So, am I gonna suck your cock now, sir? <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea what you're getting at there, Goodman. Okay, let me put it another way, Paul. You've You've done a lot of interesting drawings here, Paul. Yeah. I have a few questions. Let's start with this one. Uh, this one here, for Veronica. Is that Veronica? Yeah, that's Veronica. It's a good one, that one. It might be my favourite one. Okay, well, what's this, what's this down here? Well, that's Kieran McCulkin. McCulkin. He, Kieran McCulkin, yes. He's the shop owner. He's, he works at the shop with the, the groceries. Oh. And his ex-girlfriend comes in, who is Emma Stone. That's a bit... Do you know what an ex-girlfriend is? Yes. Oh. 
My dad has several. And my mum. Oh. Well, we can talk about that later. <laughs> okay, lovely. I, I can see the likeness. It, it almost, it looks like a real Kieran Culkin. Yes. Um, Only I, a bit sicklier. Yes. I love what you've done with Emma Stone here. She's very emotive. Yes. I've decided to make her face very big in the picture. Oh, I see. It takes up the whole picture. So what's happening over here? Are these, um, these forms that you've drawn in... in... Above them. Oh, the, those those are the other people in the shop, and they but they can hear M- Kieran McCulkin. Kieran Culkin, yes. Kieran McCulkin. Kieran Culkin, yes. Kieran McCulkin. Kieran Culkin, yes. <laughs> they can they can hear him and Emma Stone, because he's left the announcement machine on. I see. That's the big speak. And oh, I see you've written a speech bubble here. Mm. Um, you, uh, what, what what is this? Um, I'm, it's meant to say... You look like you bathed in a dumpster behind the abortion clinic. I see, he does say that. Yes, he's saying that to Emma Stone, oh, and okay. she's saying back to him... You look like the kid who got cancer for Christmas. I mean, that sounds awfully, awfully difficult. It's funny, because everyone else can hear them. Oh, I see. And they think they're talking privately about putting stuff in each other's bums. Oh, now, Paul, do you know what that means? It's a friendly gesture between people who like those kinds of gestures. Mm. Did your daddy tell you that? I read it in Spot Goes to the Butt Plug Factory. Yes, that was a problematic publication. <laughs> she really should speak to the school I really, about that. I really respect school for stocking it. <laughs> well, anyway, um, it, it, it sounds like it's something that uh, neither of them would be very happy with. Oh, but I think they are based oh. on, on the acting that they do. In oh, the picture. Right. Oh, how wonderful. Yeah, so I've drawn ha- good acting. Oh, so is it a happy ending? Uh, so to speak, sir. <laughs> That's a strangely adult <laughs> thing to say. How, how old are you again? Stop Six. winking at me. <laughs> yeah, it's, um, yes, uh, I, it, it, yes. Oh, well, okay, okay. Lovely. I can put that up on the wall with the other children's drawings. Just as soon as you can tell me about this one. Sup- superhero sp- speed dirt superhero and speed dirt is what it's called but also superhero speed date is the alternate title i see oh that's fun yeah it's about superheroes going on a date oh isn't it cute how lovely it's gonna be very funny but as you can see superman's hidden under the table and can see up supergirl's vagina yes what well, um you've written snatch here i did wonder if that was yeah what so that was that's yes. her for jj Okay. Dude, I can see her snatch. Dude, I can snap. Can't believe the size of this thing. It's like a giant fucking cornfield. It's enormous down here. Well, hmm. and it's it's but sir, it's very hairy. I'm a woman. Sir, it's very hairy. It's okay. Very funny. Great. <laughs> I I I do. I mean, <laughs> hmm, probably have to rethink the the, the student teacher relationship. But I do often think that my own snatch is is ridiculous and yeah. um. I've noticed that about Snatches, and yeah. what I've done as the artist is I've captured it. Yeah. It's 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 very accurate, and I think it's something we can all relate to, little, little so. young Paul. So, um, <laughs> what happens? What happens after the Snatch Genesis? Well, as you can see, it's like a it's like a Bayo tapestry, and that it moves on. I'm uh, very alarmed at all of this. <laughs> I'm, I'm very surprisingly well read, little boy. You're like a black hole of a child. <laughs> That's what I often call. That's my nickname here, is um, Tony the Black Hole. But in the next um, tableau, we see <laughs> the next expanse of tableau. Yes, yes, we can see the the social class dynamic between the the superheroes. Because what's happening now is that I can't remember. Does the penguin have a bomb, and is strapped it to the supergirl? Yes, I can. I can see here. He's uh, he's strapped it to the super gut, and you've got Robin uh, yeah. saying, "Well, no, nothing about snatches," which is actually very refreshing it's, from a child's it's, it's drawing. It's a different bit from the first bit. Yeah. Oh, I see. I see. <laughs> like a like a bio tapestry. Sorry, I really should be in charge of this conversation. <laughs> um, and he, he 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 wins. Oh, that's lovely. I feel I've. What yeah. a lovely ending to that picture. Yeah, and in the end, he gets he gets the affections of the girl, of the yes. super girl. Oh, but there's this other bit here. Um, that was an epilogue. Oh, it says Batman wins always. Yeah, because Robin's gay. 
Because Batman's the strong one, and Robin's the weedy one, so he can't he can't win. Oh, not in my my comedy drawings. It's a comedy drawing. It's a comedy See. drawing. It's a comedy romance drama drawing. Paul, is your dad around much? Luckily not. Yes. I can see why that would be an advantage. We did meet him the once, I remember now. <laughs> we changed schools. Everyone changed schools. <laughs> we changed schools. We all changed schools because <laughs> yeah. of your father. Daddy hole. Daddy black hole. Daddy black hole. Oh, this is fun. This is like an you've done an advert. Yeah. You've done an adf- advert, um, a joke one. It's a it's a fake advert, but it's also it's like the 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 meeting to make the advert as well. Oh, great. Oh, okay. So you've got it in two sections. Yes. You've got it in three sections actually. So we need to it's work uh... on your fractions when we get into <laughs> uh, get into sexy mathematics next week. <laughs> but okay, let's start with this first. There's a very small corner of the, the thing here. What's that? What's up going on in here? So Richard Gear. Okay. Is the head of a is, is the head of a big company that makes things. That sounds ridiculous. I know, but it's the crazy imaginings of a child. <laughs> and <laughs> and he's he's his company has made an a, an iPod thing that mm. people can listen to music on. Oh. But it's shaped and looks exactly like a life-size naked woman. Like me. But yes, I wish you weren't <laughs> naked. It's somewhat confusing, but it does illustrate your point earlier regarding vaginas. We've, we've been through this, Paul. It's the only way you learn. And nobody except... Um, that I, th- I, think what's I think you've drawn Kate Bosworth. Uh, I think it looks a bit like Rachel McAdams, the way I've drawn her. But yes, it's Kate Bosworth I've mm. drawn. Only she can see the problem with yes. the design. And people are trying to figure out why people are trying to have sexual intercourse with the iPod. Yeah. But nobody else understands why, because they think they've just made an iPod. And they oh. don't see... The significance of it being shaped like a woman. I see. So, so does it have working orifices, vaginal and other? No, it has a fan in its vagina. Uh. So that's why men are, are hurting themselves inside of it and oh. suing the company. I see. And it could be like a commentary on mm. the way women are um, li- quite literally itemized. Objectified? Objectified. Mm. I'm just a little boy, I don't know these words. Yes. Um, it's surprising obje- actually considering you're <laughs> insane, but... Objectified, mm. and the way in which men are oblivious to the sexual implications of some of the things yes. they do. Yes. But mm. it's not any of those things. No, and it is hard to actually f- figure out what it is you're doing, because here, <laughs> you did a swastika, and you shouldn't do that anyway, but then you just, you scrawled all over it, and then there, I remember you were eating this one at the time. Yes. And well, that so, was about... Communism. Yes, I somehow. see. I see. But also, it was because it would be really, really funny. It is. It is a mess. It does look like it was drawn by a very special child. <laughs> well, I am very special. Everyone says this. I can't deny that. Everybody tells me this. Are you comfortable, by the way? Would you like another martini? Um, no. I see myself more as the <laughs> teacher from Matilda, um, who who funny. deals, who deals only in bread and honey. Oh, yes. Well, that's lovely. Yeah. I've become something of a Bond villain in the last <laughs> couple of seconds. Yes, you've become quite debonair, young Paul. And um, why? Thank you. I think. <laughs> I, I think. Stop this... being so bloody debonair. <laughs> <laughs> and, and 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 okay. I think now this is probably the the, the perfect opportunity to get onto this one. I'd really like you to explain this one okay. with all of your your worldly, <laughs> wor- wor- worldly ways. It would be my pleasure. Um, this one's called Middle School Day. But then I can I can see here, you do actually have some clotted blood on this one. Yes, I yeah. decided to use genuine materials in order to tell this story. Chloe okay. Grace Moretz, who's okay. all grown up now, but mm-hmm. back back when I drew this, she wasn't. Um, she's having a period on. Oh no! Yes, it's a very tender moment for every mm-hmm. young girl. I'm told. I remember my first period. Was how was that? Was not allowed. Not allowed back to Alton Towers. Oh, yes. Um, different. Say, oh, different. Different. Not because of that. They say Mr. Bubbles Bubble Emporium's never been the same. That's not what it was called. But <laughs> I only went once. You see, if you'd done Fort Park, I might have been able to help you there. But <laughs> I've actually never been to Alton Towers either. <laughs> it was just an easy pull. 
I've just realised I was talking about a ride at Chessington World of Adventures. <laughs> so I think we should move on. Do you want some bread and honey? Yes, I do. I'll have it with my martini. Okay, now but back about this period drawing yes, that you've done for me, Paul. The problem with this young woman having her first magical becoming a woman moment mm. is that she's having it around the kid from Kick-Ass. Yes. I know she's the kid from Kick-Ass, but it's another kid. It's the other kid from Kick-Ass. It's the other kid from Kick-Ass who's not Aaron Taylor the one, Joy. Yeah. Aaron Taylor Joy or Chloe Grace Joy. No, <laughs> Yes, the one that no, no one wants to be or emulate. Christopher Mintz Joy. Yes. Yeah. God, I'm glad I'm not Christopher Mintz Plass. <laughs> we I'm can just, all appreciate that. I'm just a naked Matilda teacher. <laughs> Trying to do a, trying to make a difference. <laughs> Standing in front of a man, <laughs> a man, a man boy, a man boy. Well, that's what's happening there. But there's also another child who I don't think was famous. No. Um and, um Joe from Family Guy, they're yes. all there Lovely. and they don't know what to do about the period and they think it's disgusting and mm. it's very funny. Yeah, my friend is bleeding out of her vagina. Because and it's funny because they like their own farts and yeah. they make jokes about the bathroom. Um, but they can't handle periods, so yes. it's about hypocrisy. It's 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 like every man, every man that I've ever met, mm. is it just just scum? But but the the key thing is is we make that point, but also the paintings about how funny periods are. Yes, that's the key thing. It's great because there is a lot of blood. It's like carry up in here. Yeah. Well, yeah. well, the, the the idea is that periods are funny, mm. but they're also not funny. Yeah. And I make that point. And I will be testing you on this, Paul, later in the month. Uh, you'll be testing me on my own drawings. Well, you've uh, <laughs> it's been adopted into the national curriculum. <laughs> well, you certainly told me a story there. Would you like to hear a little story, little man? Story? <laughs> yeah, story. <laughs> you want a story? Daddy, here comes a story. Have a sit down. This is the story <laughs> of a very happy birthday. <laughs> Dada. <laughs> you remember birthday? Daddy. Birthday was good. <laughs> well, here's the story of another birthday. Uh, Here we go. So Sean William Scott has been cheated on <laughs> by his girlfriend with Johnny Knoxville. <laughs> so oh, he's, oh, oh. he's very sad. Oh. But hmm? it's going to be okay because Johnny Knoxville's going to make it all better with a special present. <laughs> Johnny Knoxville. Johnny Knoxville from the jackass I showed oh. you. Yay. Um, bam Margera! Yeah, bam! <laughs> bam, bam! Dada. Is Bam Margera a bit of a dick or not? Who knows? Anyway. <laughs> boo, boo, ba, ba, ba. Yes! Um, but the present that Johnny Knoxville got his mate is the leprechaun! <laughs> you know the leprechauns! <laughs> the dancey leprechauns with uh, the gold and the, uh, the, uh, the stereotypes. <laughs> uh, sometimes they're true. They are true sometimes, and they're true here. <laughs> mm. They're true in this story because one's been captured. I'm going to cut off your balls and feed them to you. The last thing you'll ever see is my cock. Stone fucking you! Um, and tied up in the basement and viciously beaten. <laughs> yeah. It's great. And oh. he's being beaten. <laughs> being beaten in order to find out where the gold is that he's got. Because, you know, leprechauns have the gold. <laughs> Dada has gold? N- no, Daddy doesn't have any gold. It's why we, we live in this, um, this, uh, refrigerator <laughs> box. <laughs> Dad... Dad, that bad for insolvents, sir. Yes, yes, you remember that story. Live in fridge now. <laughs> eat, eat the cold in the fridge now. Yes, it's funny, isn't it? We live in the fridge and we're cold. Cold for dinner. <laughs> cold, cold for dinner, cold for supper. That's what we say, isn't it? That's how we get through the day. Midnight so. snack's favourite. <laughs> Midnight snack of cold. So, the leprechaun, he doesn't want to give up his gold. Oh. No, he doesn't. He wants to keep hold of his gold. But don't worry, he's got a mate who's very crucially not played by Colin Farrell. Also played by Jared Butler. I told you the leprechaun was Jared Butler. And, uh, yeah. and the other leprechaun gets into a vicious fight. And they all get into a big fight. And both mm-hmm. leprechauns die. <laughs> <laughs> Yay! <laughs> Absolutely, fart. So they throw out the leprechauns and they get to keep the gold. Uh-huh. Um, but there's another part to the present, you see. Uh-huh. Johnny Knoxville also uh-huh. captured a tooth fairy kind of woman. Uh-huh. And she gives blowjobs for coins. <laughs> you know, you're a fucking Draco. <laughs> oh, I love you, my little cockney child. Uh-huh. Oh, do you have another story? <laughs> story! Yay! Story. Bankrupt I... ladder. <laughs> Property ladder. Um... <laughs> 
Yes, this one's called Truth or Dare. Do you remember the Truth or Dare game? Like the eating bugs. <gasps> Kiss daddy. <laughs> Kiss you too, little boy. Here, let's ah! talk. <laughs> Sorry, I kissed you in your eye. Sorry, little boy. Oh, no. Look, let me soothe you with a bit of cold. <laughs> and another story. So, Stephen Merchant's on a date with Halle Berry. Halle Berry. Halle Berry. From the Cat Woman. <laughs> from the Cat Woman. You remember that in the New Year's Eve? <laughs> with the truth or dare, we have... What do we have? We've got them on a date. And... But they're not going to have just a regular date. The ones that, you know, you come with me on sometimes with the ladies that I need. <laughs> yeah, you get to eat bread. All the bread. <laughs> that we get for free. <laughs> that we only order. <laughs> so Halle Berry decides she doesn't want a regular date. She wants to play Truth or Dare with Stephen Merchant. And I believe it starts with Stephen Merchant having to go up and touch a big man's ass. It's very funny. It's very funny. Everyone knows that. And then... Do for Dada. <laughs> no, don't do for Dada. It's fine. We'll, we'll just imagine the funny. Goes off. And... Oh, a whole, it, it gets crazy, basically. Oh. Yes, it all gets crazy. Halle Berry has to blow out a little blind boy's candles without him <laughs> noticing. So, and, and nobody says anything because it's really awkward. And it, it just... Oh, it just escalates. So we get a nice round. What time escalates? Escalates is... Um, uh, gets worse. It gets bigger and crazier, like my um, spiralling descent into poverty. <laughs> ah, I understand now. Yay. Um, so, yes, and it's just about the, the crazy. And they get plastic surgery and tattoos, oh. and Halle Berry looks like an offensive parody of herself, with very big lips and big breasts. And Stephen Merchant, he, he looks like a Chinese man. <laughs> which would be awful, as I'm sure you'll agree. <laughs> like Dada. Like Dada! Yes! Like I did. <laughs> that was a good mistake I made. So now they are going to have sex at the end. And that's and that's how the story closes. In a happy way. And then and then the, I came along. Then you came along from that situation. You were born of movie forty three. You are the the prodigy. You're the legacy. And I'm very proud of you, son. <laughs> What um, movie four to three? It's the storybook I'm telling you. It's all stories from the movie from the book forty three. Ah, oh. yes. And um, that's the smell. <laughs> and one day there is a smell. One day because of you, just everything's gonna go right. Trump, Brexit, it's all it's all somehow because of you, son. And it's gonna be brilliant. Because of the blind the blind boy. <laughs> because of the blind boy. <laughs> Dad. Let's have another story. <laughs> in this one... <laughs> now, in this one, basically, there's a basketball team. Now, there's a little context you need to understand here for the basketball. Basketball. Yes. We've played basketball, haven't we? Using the, the, the bin I stapled to a wall and the cat's head that we used as a ball. We, we played a bit of the basketball. <laughs> but you know how I was better than you? Um... <laughs> significantly because I was a lot taller than you you couldn't really reach the ball in my hands well in many this is a problematic idea to explain to a little boy but often try me <laughs> how many fucking times do I have to tell you you're black they're white this ain't hockey well black people can be taller than White folk, often, but not always. Yeah, and, and more muscular and athletic, I guess. <laughs> now, I know you hate the stereotypes. I know. <laughs> Even the positive ones are a bit harmful. But, here's the thing. This coach is trying to reassure these young black lads that actually they're going to be great at basketball because of their skin colour. And it's, it's really funny because it's in a, a sort of time when black people weren't thought to be good at many things. Mm -hmm, okay. And it's about the sort of clear assumed knowledge that exists therein. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's confusing. But in the end, they win the game and it's great. Oh, <laughs> Thanks. Ah, Thanks. And Terence Howard never came back to the MCU again. 
I have one last story to tell you, little child, before oh, no. I put you back in your bit of the fridge. <laughs> not, uh, no, soon enough. <laughs> <laughs> this last story is called Beazle, <laughs> and it's directed by James Gunn. So. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> so it's called Beazel and it's about um, Elizabeth Banks. How <laughs> <laughs> perfect. And she's she is dating Josh Duhamel from the Transformers. <laughs> 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 yeah, those. <laughs> Daddy. <laughs> Daddy, do a Michael Bay. Um, yes, it's about that. And they're dating, and they're having a bit of a kiss. But, oh no, his cat's going to get in the way. <laughs> also, his cat is a grotesque animated cat that does overtly sexual things, and it's very gross. <laughs> what some things? Oh, we'll get into that when you're a little older, tomorrow. Um, so, yes, uh, after a few moments of the cat doing horrible things, <laughs> um, they end up beating the living shit out of each other for the affections of Josh DeHamel because the cat's jealous, you see. <laughs> Weird priorities, <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, little boy, that's very true. But, in the end, I can't remember. I think she kills it in front of a, a whole school full of kids. A, a birthday party. And it dies. Oh. Or maybe it doesn't. I don't yeah. know. But that's the end of the story. Oh. Did you enjoy that, little boy? No. I'm glad to hear it. Now go back to your bit of the fridge. <laughs> I'm 13. <laughs> I can't live this charade any longer. <laughs> what was that? Dada? That's, That's the movie. fucking plot. 43. Jesus Christ. Fuck me. Just any idea. <laughs> Develop any idea oh, fully. I've never been more insulted in my life. <laughs> it being pre presented. Fuck. Pre presented by the shittest meal by the cook that you've paid your entire life to cook you food. <laughs> and this has been leading up to this moment. We depended on you, Peter Farrelly. It's just purveyor bones. of stories. It's just bones. Yeah. It's shit and sick all over it. <laughs> On my own. How did you get this before I edit? <laughs> Christ almighty. Why do all these movies look so fucking ugly? Why do they all have to look like some hyper real, gross, sweaty ball sack of a Michael Bay filter? Hanging off a Hugh Jackman chin. Oh, yeah, I Jesus. don't know. I, I just feel like everything is edited with Windows Movie Maker. And they just haven't gotten past the, the basic shot, reverse shot, <laughs> nature of, of, of a five-year-old doing, doing a film for other children. Jesus Christ, it's just this awful, satch, oversaturated oh. nightmare vision that all of these comedy films, the epic movies, the fucking Samlerverse are all presented in. And it's like there's someone figured out, oh, these colours are the ones that will make people laugh. Oh. Just like some weird, toxically engineered sausage. <laughs> <laughs> designed to be as addictive as possible and as unnutritional as possible. Yeah, and it's like, oh, is that colour fading for you now? Well, here's some tits. <laughs> Eat it up. Whenever, yeah. we're whenever we've got a bit, of a bit of a down moment in the film, let's look at some boobs, everyone. I've always found it fucking sinister when comedy tries to mix in nudity. It's just something a bit... I'm trying to think of an example I like. <laughs> and it's just... It's, it's almost always weirdly sinister of just, um... Hey, lads! Yeah. Like that last shit joke? Well, here's some boobs. Oh, I can... We got everything for you. Hey, I can think of one great one, which is forgetting Sarah Silverman, because it's Jason Segel. Oh, I haven't... And it's... it's oh, forgetting Mi Sarah Marshall? Yeah, Sarah Silverman is... <laughs> I forgot yeah. that Sarah Silverman <laughs> wasn't Sarah Marshall. We're all trying to forget Sarah Silverman. Oh. But, no, forgetting Sarah Marshall. Jason Segel and his... I and haven't his, seen it. And his wang hanging out. <laughs> and it, and it's... Twanger. Yeah, his, his lovely little twanger. <laughs> Jason Siegel, Siegel Weagle. Oh, yeah. that sounds great. But but it's it's different. It's self deprecating. And in this, it's just is wait. It, yeah, is it just titillation for the lads? Are you saying that Halle Berry's massive fake breasts aren't in some way meaningful <laughs> or self deprecation? I didn't say they weren't meaningful. <laughs> just saying that meaning is horror. <laughs> Very forceful oh. meaning, bludgeoning me in the face. Fuck me, that whole and just the, the oh, I don't know. Well, that that bit was that bit. And again, it's it's one of those things that I don't. I'm not offended because it's 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 crass or it's mean to other people. I'm just offended by its laziness mm. and its and its low standards. Yeah. That anyone could write any of these sketches and go, yeah, that's good. That's <laughs> something that I want the world to see. That's what I've been working on for the past year. Four yeah. Years. And this is what we've fucking commissioned people. We've commissioned yeah. actual human beings to come and make for us. And, and and the fact that they've just dragged... They seem to have dragged so many people down. People yeah. that I respected. Fuck it's, me. It's, it's the anti... 
anti-extras, isn't it? Yeah. People come on to show that they can do something a bit different, but rather than come on and, and do self-deprecating humour that shows that they're normal people, they just come on and, and just do, sh- you know, they just do the most, the, the crassiest bullshit. And it's like, if that's what is really in your hearts, yeah. and that you wanted to do to show that you were different, <laughs> then please just go be different somewhere else. <laughs> yeah. In a river. Come back to the same. It's important. Yeah. It's important that you hide this. <laughs> this must only be, be between you and the under the cover people. But it makes you wonder just how the fuck did something like this happen? Well, yeah, I- exactly. You wonder what, firstly, what the Farrellys had on these people and how they managed to get these people to do this. And then you just have to wonder how the fuck is this supposed to turn out? I think you'll like how this place has come out, mate. I should hope so. It's been four years you've been building it. Well, with a house like this, mate, there are bound to be some funding issues. The initial backers only came on because we had Hugh and Kate. Hugh and Kate? Best builders this side of Canary Wolf. Oh, okay. But that that didn't get you the funding you needed? Nah, well, the plan was still heavily unmarketable. What plan, exactly? Well, you know, we wanted to make an house, but basically go further. Further? Yeah, like really push the limits of what an house should be. And Hugh and Kate signed up to do that with you? Yeah. Well... We met them and then kind of guilted them into working on it. Okay, uh, sort of we. Who, who coordinated this? Well, initially it was going to be the three teams taking on one third of the ass. Those guys who did the South Park, uh, you know, the ass in the park. Uh, me and my brother, Peter Farrelly, and uh, two, then two old blokes who made an airplane once or twice or some shit. Sounds great. Um, so, th- wait, three teams working on one house at once? Yeah, so obviously it didn't work out. Right. So we ended up with 13 teams working on one room each. With 19 people designing the project. Okay, maybe I should actually see this place now. Sure. Well, it's right through here. I think it's great, considering. I mean, everyone did a great job, considering. Okay, considering what? Well, you know, no one actually wanted to do this. How's that? Well, most agents would avoid me because they knew what I wanted to do. I really had to lean on mates and contacts for this one. Proper guilt people. Luckily, we only had people working a day or two at a time for four years. And a lot of them relished the chance to do something different. Most of them used to building houses. Wait, isn't this a house? No need to be so literal, mate. Unbelievable. Okay, so what kind of house could you have possibly put together under such wretched- Ah! Edvard Monk's The Scream. Moving on to our room of obscene comedy. And as you can see from this painting, it's really the lesser of the three. See the infantile way in which the brushstrokes spread across canvas, as though it was held by several people at any one time. And ultimately, it's a puerile statement of defiance that's incoherent and protesting social mores that don't exist as we know it. Yeah, but what about that one? Sorry? That one over there. What about that painting? The one with a bearded ponce with a cow tit in his mouth. Oh, the Freddy Got Fingered. Right, he's saying he's a sexy boy. That's just ripped torn, covered head to toe in elephant spunk. Yes, but look past the spunk. What's being said here? He intended it to be difficult to watch. Well, isn't that what the clowns were doing in painting 43? Oh, no, it's quite different. They were trying to make people laugh. Wasn't that what Tom Green was trying to do? Well, yes, but it really is quite different. Look, that other one is just a dead baby with pipes, and then a bloke having sex with a disabled person to bring down housing prices. You're telling me that's funny? What, the jam? Yeah. Yes. Why? Well, because it's clever weird. Can't you tell? It's all just at the actor Kevin Eldon's face. And now I've noticed it's all we can see. It's all I can see everywhere. Well, I mean, maybe everything is Kevin Eldon's face. And isn't that really the point? Of, of movie 43? Oh, of everything. Um, and I think that that's what uh, painting 43, sorry, really forgets to... You know, it doesn't quite cover it. It's unable to articulate. It's right. so It's so concerned with the the puerile nature, the jokes, which on the surface are there to make everybody laugh, but there's nothing beneath it. We have, o- over here with Freddie Gottfinger, we have um, a man who is using the jokes to obscure something deeper, something almost Dadaist, wouldn't you say? And over here with, with The Jam, the, uh, the, the, the long dead painter, uh, Christopher Morris, he wasn't, wasn't he just do, doing something that was really very clever? So when I'm laughing at, like, the doctor who's killing patients just to fulfil his own sick needs, it's yes. like, I'm not, I'm not just laughing at how wrong that is. Yeah. It's, it's a, a bad society? Um, it, it could be. It's, it's, who are we to say what goes on in the mind of, of uh, the jam man, as he's affectionately known? I mean, aren't you an art critic? 
Well, you know, I'm an art critic. I'm not all art critic. I think, I think what we can say is that there's, whether we understand it or not, um, much, in the, much in the vein of some of the greater painters of our time, like Tarkovsky and David Lynch, we know that there is, there is something there. And whether, whether we are able to plumb those depths with our minds alone, there is something there. Sounds kind of lazy to me, mate. You're just saying, knowing there's something there. Oh, hang on, hang on. How do you know there isn't something there with movie 43 that you can't, you can't find or see or detect or be able to look for? <laughs> also, is anyone else in this tour group? Where's everyone gone? <laughs> it's a, it's a Love? <laughs> I'm sure it's just been you all along. Oh. Yes. Well, in, anyway, I think, I think ultimately you can, look at, you can also look at the source, can't, can't you? Um, Fr Freddie Gottfinger, the work of just one mad genius. Mm. Uh, Jam, the work of one mad genius. And uh, then we come to Painting 43. The, the, men, are neither, the men are neither mad <laughs> nor genius. <laughs> it, is, it is many screaming fools, all, uh, all tearing the canvas in, in opposite directions. So th w whether there is something or not, it must be so completely lost and mired in the, the, the good or ill intentions of, of 43 other people, or give or take. So, right, so look, Jam, the Jam and Freddy mm. Got Figured, yes. they're better because they're only written by one bloke who you've decided is good. Yes. Whereas Movie 43 is written by many people, none of whom you've decided is good. Yes. Well, this is the interesting thing. There are many mitigating parts to Painting 43 that would, su that would suggest uh, a, a more than satisf satisfactory end product. We have uh, James Gunn, the man responsible for those for that film about the, the vigilante superhero, and then some some tweets about paedophilia. We have uh, Elizabeth Banks; she was in that film with Seth Rogen, and oh. um, you know, so so looking at and you know the rest. So looking at all of those, you would say some some good might have come from it, but uh, but you know maybe a, a selection, a selection of individual positive things is maybe all we can get from this but as a cohesive whole <laughs> well there are more than one or two holes I'm afraid so wait if, if, if there's so many people involved in this some of whom are good mm. by your metric yes then surely that suggests that there's some one unifying element that made it all bad because it is shit well yes I'm glad you can see that I mean <laughs> well I mean look at it it's really contrived I mean if it's trying to say any one thing then why is it doing so with a series of increasingly obscure tableaus that just hint at what it is they're actually trying to say? Yeah, uh, well, yes, you took the words right out of my mouth. Ugh, quick fire. What? <laughs> what was that? It was the gun in the castle. They fire it every day at one. It's fucking one only. Already. Mm-hmm. Fuck me. That was a horrible party, man. Mm-hmm. Fucking horrible. Too many people too much shit going on and I like some of those people but you couldn't relax and enjoy it because it was just well how did it get so obnoxious I feel like the people who organized it had a really bad sense of humor yeah still there were some good things about it oh yeah there were some funny bits during the night when you get a lot of good people together I mean do you, rem do you remember do you remember Kate Winslet when she she came in yeah. she was she oh Kate couldn't couldn't get the couldn't put the bottle down, could she? Couldn't get it away from her lips. <laughs> she loved that vodka. Every time oh, yeah. she saw the balls on Hugh Jackman's chin. Yeah, what was that about? He showed up with balls on his chin. Yeah, is mm. was that like a joke? I, I guess, but you know what Hugh's like. Yeah, he, he, he gets something in his hands and he just runs with it. I don't know. I couldn't decide if he had put them on himself and he thought it was funny, or if someone else had done it. But Kate was. Yeah, she was not happy. She was mortified, and you, you really, I mean, you really believed that she needed that vodka when she was drinking yeah. it, didn't you? Yeah. 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 Oh. yeah. Do, you yeah. When, do you remember when those two blokes were like, they were, they were filming each other doing like weird stunts? Mmm. And one of them threw a dartboard at the other, and the other one had a dart in his mouth? Mmm. Pretty good, that one stunt. Like, I could see why it would be like a viral clip, because like the, just the board thwacking this idiot in the head. Oh, he's an idiot. He is an idiot. He is an just, idiot. I don't know. It just it kind of made me laugh the bluntness of the act. But then, did you see all the? You saw the viral hits they got. Yeah, There's a lot of viral. No, hits. no, mate. I, I I heard that that wasn't even real. Oh. Uh, yeah. It, it's fucking confusing, but I don't know. That's a shame because the trick looked really good. <laughs> Actually, I thought there were a lot of, you know, pretty reprehensible types of the party as well. Yeah. But I thought that when Halle Berry and Stephen Merchant showed up. And they got talking um, against all odds. Mm. 
That was I thought that was pretty sweet. I mean, I like both of them. Yeah, I like both of them, and it was kind of... One of them hasn't always had the best luck picking projects, but I quite like them both. Yeah, and it was believable that yeah. they were there talking to each other in the way that they were. I like that in people at a, pub, at a party, is believability between them. Yeah, some, well, sometimes there's no, you know... You think, what's she doing talking to him? Yeah. And it was like that at the beginning, wasn't it? You know, you're like, oh my god, why is she talking to him? Yeah. He was making her laugh a bit, sort yeah. of. Yeah. He's making yeah. us laugh. Yeah, he had a good line. What was it about the, the Holocaust? Oh, that was great. Circumcision has never really taken off, to be honest, where I'm from. It's <laughs> not, you know what I mean? It's not, it's not the vogue. Um, I tend to associate it with Jewish people, and, you know, we don't have many Jewish people in Europe anymore. Everyone, everyone laughed at that. Oh, do you remember the people just threw down their drinks? And they were like, <laughs> fuck yes, Stephen Merchant. Yeah, they threw down their beer pong. Nice one. They smashed Thanks. up the beer pong table. <laughs> and, oh... It was good. And then, do you, do you remember when Josh Duhamel came? Oh, what was he doing? Well, he came he came in and everyone thought, oh no, he's going to be all like, whiskey tango, fox uh, trot. Yeah. He's an army bloke, right? Yeah, he's, he's, army. All, he's all army, he's been there and back and he's back He's in the again, Michael Bay unit. And again and back again and there again. And he was, he came in and he had that cat, that cartoon cat. Oh yeah, And you know, I thought I imagined that. Yeah, well... We all did a little bit. I thought, you know, what's Josh Duhamel got on us? But then he came in and he was... And he wasn't an army man, was he? He wasn't... You know, he wasn't... Who are? Oh, who are? Watch my six. Yeah. Six. He's always telling me to watch his six. Yeah. It was, well, yeah, it was my turn to watch his six. And, um... And he but was he just said, don't worry about it. Well, he was talking to this cat. And he was he was going... And I've never heard him speak like that. It was crazy. He must have been hammered. <laughs> must have been classic stupid face um, I really like that on the cover of that magazine that uh, Kate Winslet had mm. with Hugh Jackman on it um, it had the headline why is this man still single yeah and that was quite like a weird overly blunt headline for that to have like it was our fault <laughs> yeah exactly that was good <laughs> oh man oh did you remember um, did you remember when when Chloe Grace Moretz 13 year old Chloe Grace Moretz came in and then had a period yeah I mean, it was gross obviously but yeah, was, that was when the party got a bit Led Zeppelin for my liking mm, to I totally know what you mean <laughs> I don't need to look that up at all Hall Halls of Gondor yeah <laughs> um, yeah cool yeah yeah <laughs> inspired Any that song of theirs the Battle of Evan <laughs> Shark Week <laughs> um, but she but I, th I thought after a while, after everyone had stopped freaking out, I thought, oh, this is quite innocent. It's quite an innocent storyline under, under the, the grossness. Mm. And when the dads came in and they were, they were being overtly daddy and, and, and dumb masculine, I, yeah. thought, I thought, yeah, do you know what? They got that right, actually. Mm. Well, yeah. I, got the, I got the idea of what was going on, the idea that, yeah. you know, guys react badly to this very straightforward female thing. Yeah. But, um, I don't know. It, it just the com it, it it wasn't that funny for me based on how everyone was acting. Uh, you didn't really see where they were going with it. <laughs> I didn't really get that part of the party. Oh uh, no, yeah. it's a shame. It's kind of deep. <laughs> um, speaking of deep, when um, Hugh Jackman dribbled a little bit of food onto his bald chin, mm. um, Kate Winslet briefly went to dab, like as a polite thing mm. that she would do for anyone, but then reconsidered when she remembered that they were balls. Oh yeah. <laughs> I also just love Hugh Jackman's voice. Now I'm done with that bit. That's good. Now we're all done with that bit, mate. And uh, <laughs> I, can I can stop dry heaving. <laughs> Fuck, I drank a lot last night, yeah? Yeah, man. Oh, oh man. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh was and the jock tried to punch his screen as well. That was good. Yeah. And the kid was like, did you just try and punch your screen? <laughs> it's like, because he did. Yeah. And uh, he punches a screen. It's quite good. That was good. Early on in that, I like the fact that they're trying to you remember when those guys were like, that guy was trying to put a virus on his brother's computer? Mm. And he googled pornography with viruses. <laughs> it was quite a dumb way of doing yeah. that. Quite like it's the kind of you know, kind of guy that would punch his screen, I guess. <laughs> um, speak, speaking of pornography of pornography with viruses, do you remember um Kieran Culkin was he had some he had some lines, didn't he? Mm. I thought I thought some of them were, were like a bit fresh. Yeah. I thought he was he was going for something. I thought he was gonna I don't, to be honest, I didn't know what he was going for when he first got here. I don't know, I couldn't tell if there was something going on between him and the Emma Stone who was there. Yeah. I mean, they kept, like, poking each other's faces. Yeah. I don't know if that was, like, a friend thing that they do. Yeah, he said something about wanting to lick her until she weeps. I want to lick you till you weep. I don't know, I just, I just laughed. Yeah. But then Emma Stone looked at me and I felt... I just felt a bit sad after that. Yeah, she shouldn't have been there. No. 
Uh, Should any of us? Yeah, but um, I do quite like the premise. Do you remember when um, Liv and um, Naomi, Naomi were um, come on, mate, we yeah. went out of her for four years. <laughs> she was bullying their son. They were bullying their son because the idea was that they were like homeschooling him. Yeah. Um, and like, but they wanted the homeschooling to be realistic, so they like actually bullied him and like mm. made him feel really socially anxious and all the rest yeah. of it. That was quite. I, I quite liked the premise because it was quite. It was kind of like that old show Jam. They yeah. used to have a lot of stuff like that, like um, like that. <laughs> oh, cool. <laughs> yeah, that sounds good, mate. I should watch it. <laughs> I felt really good whenever Robin. <laughs> you know when Robin and Batman were in, and um, oh, those guys dressed as Batman and Robin. Yeah, those guys dressed as Batman. Or oh, was they dude? I thought they were Bat. Oh, they were, I don't think they were actually Batman and Robin. Are you sure? Well, I'm relatively sure there is no Batman and Robin. What? It's all right, mate. What, what, what was your what was your best bit about Batman and Robin showing up? <sighs> well, anyway, when um, Batman Batman was a jerk, which is why I thought it was a real Batman and Robin. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, anyway, isn't he Batman be a dick in real life? I mean, even the real Batman and Robin is just guys dressed up as Batman and Robin. So True. QED, mate. Yeah. But anyway, <laughs> he was really nasty to Robin all the time. It made me feel really bad. And that bit just that bit when we thought that he'd gotten the better of him before it turned out to be Batman's plan all along mm. to get him to kiss a guy yeah. and then and then just dispose of a bomb that way yeah. there was a little bit there where he won and I went oh it's yeah. good isn't it yeah definitely I felt something briefly <laughs> yeah it was a good moment mate mm. also still on that homeschooled bit like with the thing right. there a couple of lines made me laugh um, I c- I've written down my superpower is sucking dicks but I can't remember the context um Maybe if I think really hard, I'll remember what that was, and it'll like, it'll just like happen between us. My superpower would be sucking dicks. While you're thinking about that, I'm gonna go back to the the Batman bit because okay. I really think they were, you know, real. <laughs> he was looking on. He was on his knees looking at uh, Supergirl's vagina. Yeah. And we were all laughing, obviously, because <laughs> brilliant. Yeah. But um, and he was like, oh, it's like a giant fucking cornfield, and mm. he had to think about it, and that was what came out after he thought about it. Yeah, oh, mate. Yeah. Mate. They do look like that. Yeah. yeah. Another good line there, like when um, Supergirl like knows he's under there, mm. and it's like, um, I, I, you know, is it about Batman under the table? And it's like, oh, did you see him with your X-ray vision? And it's like, no, I can see him. Yeah. That was quite fun. Yeah, that's good actually, and good. I'm glad that she knew because I thought for a while that everyone was laughing at Supergirl. Yeah, that wouldn't have been nice. No. She was great. I really like Kirsten. I really like Kristen in that yeah. outfit. She looked. She looked all forested. She looked like a yeah. good Supergirl. Do you think someone told her it was a fancy dress party and then? Yeah. Or she just goes around like that. Yeah. Felt kind of bad for her, actually. Mm. I saw her crying later. No. Yeah. But she might have been happy tears. Might have been. Yeah. How good she looked in that uniform. Yeah. You'd never be overdressed or something like this. No. Especially if you're Kristen Bell. Yeah. Fuck yeah. Wish I was Kristen Bell. <laughs> <laughs> Wish I was Christian Bell. Oh, I also like the line. Like, it was really dumb when the kid brought out that stuffed, like, replica of his mum yeah. to indicate that he was crazy because, oh, yeah, he was crazy. Uh, but then he does, like, a little voice for the mum puppet. Oh! Girl. It, it made me laugh how <laughs> awful that thing was. The, that kid was actually really good. He had yeah. a good, horrified-looking face. He was he was just going for it, wasn't he, that kid? Yeah. And when the way he let his mum, Naomi Watts, fuck him, and yeah. just have that look on his face that entire time. Yeah. Like, everyone around was just pissing themselves, and he was... Oh, man. He just kept it going. He it did. amazing. Mm. That kid. Do you want some Gatorade, mate? No. <laughs> no. I'm all right. I'm going to have air dog. Oh. Hospital, please. <laughs> um, when oh, <laughs> just sort of, uh, oh, do you remember Chloe Grace and Rex's period? I don't know if I've mentioned this. Yeah, I mean, oh. <laughs> legendary. Mate. Uh, the dad, her dad, came in afterwards and went, "What the hell kind of sick family squashes a large tomato in my daughter's pants?" Yeah, that was really good, actually. Um, <laughs> the very contrived kind of f- way of getting around him not understanding the situation yeah. which was quite good and then everyone everyone went hey lad and he, he finally broke character and went ah <laughs> idiots went, ah. Uh, in, when um, I don't know if you ever heard I was outside at nope. part of it uh, at the barbecue oh. bit and um, uh, Chris Pratt was there with some other guys what? Yeah, Chris Pratt was there. was there? yeah he was there he was I good. didn't see him I came out later and uh, he was gone. No, he, he went home he had to go poop on his girlfriend or something uh. Um, but uh, when they were there, uh, oh, I get it. One of their friends was advising him on how best to poop on his girlfriend, uh-huh. and he got out like this, um, I guess, laxative tablet mm. in his back pocket. And I think the other guy who was there just said, um, "You carry that around with you at a barbecue?" 
<laughs> that was quite fun. Oh, that's pretty good, actually. Yeah. That's what I'd have said if I'd have seen someone with that. <laughs> I and mean, it was super contrived, him having it, so yeah. it was like, funny that someone brought awareness to that. you you got to call him out on that. Oh, was it um, was it Billy? Oh, Billy. Billy Laxative. Billy Laxative is what oh, his name he's was and what doing he was. That. Someone yeah. never, no one ever calls him out. He's tall and mean looking. Yeah, it's very confusing though because he's made of laxatives. Like he's an animate laxative, but he always carries them in his pocket anyway. Well, why would he could have just chipped them off of his being? Yeah. Well, if you're made of laxative, why would you want to be giving it away? Surely you'd want to retain as much of your bo- your body, <laughs> your being as possible. Yeah. I never got him. He's, he's weird. I'm glad he went. But very few people get Billy Laxative. Yeah. Well, you know that's his problem, not mine. <laughs> um, I think you know, after a while. The t- like Terence Howard's bit about about you're black, they're white. It got a bit, it got a bit tiring, and I thought, oh, is yeah. it, is it a bit like it, I felt, I felt a little bit like ra- racified at the end of it. But he was, it was funny in the beginning, wasn't it? Mm. Well, I think it's a difficult thing when you're trying to do like exasperated comedy, like mm. explaining the same thing over yeah. and over again. And I think it, ca- it it does run the risk of becoming just really boring if you can't improvise enough around it, and it's yeah. just comes down to you saying the same thing over and over yeah, again yeah. that's kind of what happened yeah but yeah it was funny in parts yeah I really liked it when Kieran Culkin referred to the uh, Golden Girls you look like the slutty one on the Golden Girls Dorothy Blanche you take that back and Emma Stone seemed really offended that he had besmirched the <laughs> honour of Blanche from the Golden Girls I think, the, I think the word Blanche is just quite funny yeah there's a I mean, they again. They had a lot of uh, had a lot of good stuff in that conversation. I think they were yeah. just pulling it out of their asses. Um, <laughs> yeah, maybe. But you know, there's that bit when uh, the bit when he just he slipped his finger in inside Emma Stone's mouth, and yeah. it looked kind of gross. But they looked like they were both going for it. Cause they didn't. Neither one of them wanted to chicken out. Yeah. And then, um, and then, do you remember that old black guy came in out of nowhere and did the same to Kieran Culkin, and he he wasn't actually he wasn't on board. <laughs> in the yeah, end. I remember so that. You, mate. you know, you give oh, it out. Brilliant. All, give it out but you can't take it can you? yeah how about that yeah. makes sense of that when Wonder Woman was at the party was that the first time Wonder Woman had been in a mo- in a party like a live action party a live action party I think it might have been mate Jesus um, Christ there's a lot of issue with licensing there's a, there was a moment in that whole thing that made me laugh which was um, when it turned out Supergirl Kristen Bell got off with Robin yeah but it turned out to be the Riddler in disguise nice it's Sean Locke's the Riddler yeah <laughs> and um Robin said, um, you knew it was him the whole time? And um, he was like, yeah. It's like, then why did you make me kiss her? Him. That. <laughs> that made me laugh. <laughs> oh, this. Sorry, it was this. This, right, yes. okay. I just mostly, when I close my eyes at night now, I think all I'm going to think about is the, the hopeful looks on those, those Beeble kids' faces <laughs> when, uh, when Terrence Howard, Howard was just screaming at them because they were yeah. so innocent. Yeah. And every time... They did he, Innocence really well, actually. Yeah. Those massive men. Yeah. Every time Terence Howard screamed at them, You're black, they're white! They'd turn around and say something like, I, th- I think what Coach is trying to say is, mm. as long as we've got God on our side, and then it would, <laughs> they'd do a slow clap and it'd be cut by Terence Howard's awful shouting. Yeah. It was, it's pretty good. It was, and when those white guys came in, those weedy white guys, one of them just said, Gee, they look tough. <laughs> <laughs> just, it's very funny, very self-deprecating. Yeah. It was almost enough to keep that the one joke yeah. going. Remember when the TV was on for a bit, and um, there was some sort of ad, some sort of promotional kind yeah. of charity ad, and it just the tagline was just machine uh, machines. They're full of kids. Mm. That was quite funny. Yeah, it was quite funny. It's weird though. I don't understand why that would be there at a party. <laughs> well, so, you know, some just got bored. Edinburgh, I suppose. Yeah. To be honest, mate, I black, kind of blacked out after that. Oh, you might have been asleep by then. Yeah, I don't really, I don't really remember much else of the party. <laughs> Oh right! Did anything else happen? Or? Oh, a couple of other things. Yeah. Um, I mean, Richard Gere was there, and I just kind of liked Richard Gere a bit. He wasn't doing anything particularly funny or good, but oh, yeah. his presence just reminded me of good times I'd spent with Richard Gere in the past. Oh, nice. Don't rub it in, mate. <laughs> also on the television after that um, other thing mm. um, was uh, an advert for the iBabe, that dreadful new um, thing. Oh, that I think man. Richard Gere's company actually makes. Oh. Um, but at the end of it, because apparently they've been having trouble with. Um, people having sex with it and they'd spent ages talking about a policy to get them to not do uh, it turned out the solution was just this really crap at the very end slogan where it just comes up I babe don't fuck it oh you're not supposed to yeah oh yeah that explains the mangled cock oh right <laughs> <laughs> sorry mate I forgot about the mangled cock <laughs> just for a minute I did find there was an advert on 
for Tampax when one uh, of them got eaten by like a shark. Oh yeah. And the idea was that you know the woman using Tampax, her bl- you know wasn't releasing blood, so the shark didn't get her. Mm. It wasn't that unrealistic as a Tampax advert. I, I could believe that as a Tampax advert in Europe or something. <laughs> well, like if a Tampax advert was done by Lynx or something. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, oh, yeah, there were some good things. Still, hardly newsworthy. One whale saved, seven dead. And now we go live to a press conference with the OG team. Hello, everyone, settle down, settle down. Hello, thank you for attending this conference, OG team. Uh, we will now be taking any comments, um, suggestions, or um, things that you liked about Movie 43. Any. <laughs> oh, oh, launching the pilot, I think you should... Oh, okay, okay. Anyone, anything, any comments, any, even just decry us or tell us we're dumb for trying to... Huh. Okay, then I guess I'll be making my kids concert recital after all. He's, re- he's reciting the concert. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we'll be back in just a moment for final thoughts. Sorry about that, Mr. Uh, Paul or Mr. Salt. Oh, either. I'm, I'm quite easy going, really, <laughs> apart from when I'm talking about my deep-seated anxieties. Okay, Doctor. well... Oh yeah, it, yeah, definitely, doctor. But anyway, <laughs> thank you for thank you for waiting. Sorry about that. I just had to go and do a, 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 a cat. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. um, well, I guess it just it all stems from that dream. You mm. know, the one I told you about, Dream Forty Three. Mm. I just can't get over it. It's just it's so it's just stuck with me. You know, I don't know how my brain could have contrived of such a thing. I am of the human race. How could I have thought of something so twisted and wrong? Yes. Well, with this movie 43 dream 43 dream 43 we are to some extent responsible for our dreams and for holding on to them mm. why, why do you think this is why do you think you'd be holding on to that i guess i just have a certain view of what comedy and or what should be funny and what what should be in a in a move in a dream mm. and yes. the movie for sorry the dream 43 just um dream 43 who are we I'm sorry. I, I, I just, I guess, I just think that Dream Forty Three was just like the worst example of this kind of dream, and it's really responsible for the makers of that dream, i.e., me, to have mm. done this in such a way that is just made for like the broadest possible demographic, which is also me. Yes, uh, Paul, Mister mm. Salt, can I broach something with you? Sure. I mean, you're the therapist, right? Yes. Movie forty three, Paul. What does that mean to you? Will you poop on me? No, that 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 was in the dream. No, but I think you're quite aware of what movie forty three is. If you think hard enough. <sighs> no, I'm not. No, I'm not. No, I'm not. No, I'm not. I I think that this dream forty three is nothing more than a creation of your own unconscious mind that will preclude you from having to confront the very real albatross, if you will, that is movie forty three. It's been there for the, for for months now, for I years. I don't like this one. Let's, let's do the car mechanic one again. And I'm going to be honest here, Paul, because it's for your own good, and you don't pay me to be to, to sugarcoat things for you. I pay you to fix my car. This it's is an avoidance one. measure. You are contriving any possible scenario that will prevent you from discussing this film. Uh, hey, I'm a kid. I'm a child now. Admit again. it. it it's, uh, Admit it. Art gallery. You keep dragging us into these ridiculous scenarios where suddenly I'm a. Th- I'm not a therapist. Nurse. I'm a. Th- I'm. I'm not even. I don't even want to be a. Th- I don't even know what a therapist is. Well, that, that, you, you say say therapist thing. It's all right, know. mate. It's, it's all right. Garage mm, guy's tell me easier. More. Tell me more. A garage guy will be it's easier. It's your fault because you just can't stand Nurse. facing up to our responsibilities. Nurse. Because you can't stand to review Movie 43! It's just a comedy by people who aren't funny. Yeah, yeah, I guess that's it. And they try to be provocative, but... It just comes over as immature and kind of ugly. Well, that's it. So, you gonna come back to the surface? Y- yes. Not just yet, though. I just, um... I want to stay here just a little bit longer, you know? Okay. I'm gonna go watch Eat, Pray, Love. Oh, well, that sounds, um... Bye. God, Eat, Pray, Love. Fuck me.